a few years ago, I read the story of two basketball teams in Alabama who duked it out in an unforgettable game, the North Jackson Chiefs and the Fort Payne Wildcats. The week before this game, which was not even supposed to be a tough game at all for the Fort Payne Wildcats, a week before the game, the Chiefs' best player quit the team. Add to it that by the time the game ended in a tie and made it into overtime, the Chiefs were down to two players with a minute left in overtime. The rest had fouled out. So you talk about an underdog story. Who are you rooting for in this game? Well, we all want to see the underdog do the unthinkable. No one thought that it could be done. No hope, no chance. Yet, the North Jackson Chiefs kept the game close throughout the overtime, and they hit a last-second shot to win the game. We love a good underdog story, and we are right in the middle of one in Judges chapter 7. Welcome to Life Words Day by Day. Yesterday, we saw that God knows what His people need. And God is gracious enough to give them assurances and reassurances, confirmations in line with His Word, in order to prod their shaky faith along. Today we see that God's assurances are for great actions. God's assurances are for great acts of faith. And here is why God's assurances lead to great acts of faith. Because God takes weak people and pits them against insurmountable odds, which require great acts of faith. As if the situation were not insurmountable enough, the weapons that the Israelite army goes to war with are most unusual. Listen to what it says in Judges chapter 7, verse 16. He divided the 300 men into three companies and put trumpets into the hands of all of them and empty jars with torches inside the jars. The trumpet, trumpet spoken of here is a ram's horn, and the ram's horn carried a symbolic meaning to the Jewish people. They saw it as a sign of God's faithfulness in provision. The ram's horn was used to call upon God's faithfulness. In Numbers chapter 10 it says, When you go to war in your land against the adversary who oppresses you, then you shall sound an alarm with the trumpets, that you may be remembered before the Lord your God, and you shall be saved from your enemies. So we see that this ram's horn, the trumpet, is a sign of God's faithfulness, but it's also crying out for God to continue to be faithful. And the Jews know the ram's horn to be a sound that symbolized God's miraculous giving of life. The clay pots, they were a way to conceal the light of the torch inside them. But they also provide a crash when the clay pots are broken. I can't help but think that the Apostle Paul had this very event in mind when he wrote to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, where he says, We have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. So Paul's making the comparison that our lives are like the clay pots. That's us. And the light, the torch, is the radiance or the power of God. But you know what has to happen to the clay pot in order for the light to shine. It has to be broken. It has to be smashed. We have to die to ourselves, to our hopes and dreams and our own plans. You let them fall by the wayside in order for the light to shine. So these are the weapons at the army's disposal. The ram's horn, the clay pots, and the torches. Have you noticed that when God goes to war, conventional, worldly methods of warfare, they go out the window. When the nation of Israel has grown to become a nation in the opening chapter of Exodus, God doesn't use their corporate synergistic strength to deliver them. He uses an elderly man, Moses. When it comes time to go to war against Jericho, he doesn't use soldiers. He uses priests and ram's horns. When it comes time to select a king, he chooses a shepherd boy with a pension for playing the harp. And when it comes time to send the Redeemer into the world, he chooses to use a sleepy little town called Bethlehem at a little known girl named Mary. When it comes time to round up a posse of men to hand off the duty of caring for the church and her mission after Jesus' ascension, he uses the unexpected, the nobodies of society, fishermen, tax collectors, political zealots. He gravitates towards the underdogs, the forgotten, the less thans, the weak, the poor. The weapons and plans of God's warfare are unconventional. So walk with Jesus day by day and fight the enemy in the strength of his might. And when you join us tomorrow, I'll show you what I mean by the strength of his might in Judges chapter 7. 
But when you pray today, please remember Phil Knott and his family, our missionary in Africa. Also, remember the Arabic Life Word broadcast that's heard in Australia, Canada, the Middle East, and the United States. Thank you.